Hi and welcome to this video on changing the washer on a ball valve in a water cylinder. I've had this drip drip sound for quite a while now out of my water cylinder so I thought I'd pull together a video while I fixed it and talk you through the process. This ugly monstrosity is my hot water cylinder. As I live in a flat I don't have a separate cold water tank and hence the cold tank on top of the hot water tank within this cylinder. Okay, so focusing on the cold water tank at the top here, this top section can simply be peeled back off. And that's just a lid for the cold water tank. Okay, so if we now go in over the top, this is all a bit interesting to try and film. You can see the ball valve here. Water comes in through this white pipe in my particular case, drops into the cold water tank. Um, and heads down into the hot water tank as and when it is required. So basically the dripping was coming from this white pipe here. Effectively we're going to have to take this whole ball valve off here in order to look into it. So in order to remove this section we've got a nut over here which we're going to need to turn and we're going to need to counter it with some turn from the other side. So. Uh, I tend to use an adjustable spanner on the the main nut itself. So over here. And then I'll tend to use a pair of adjustable pliers here in order to hold around the tap area itself because there is a solid section to that tap you can hopefully see. Um, you don't want to hold on this end section because that itself is going to come off, you'll see later in the video. Okay, so I've got my spanner here, put that over the nut. Just turn it around to make some space for the split joint pliers here. Just make sure I put them against the metal and not against the plastic. And just turn them in opposite directions here to undo the nut relative to the ball valve itself. can be quite stiff if it's not been done for a long while, but a couple of turns and it seems to come nicely loose. I'm going to do the rest by hand, just being really careful to support the weight of the ball valve so that it moves as easily as possible and get my thumb over the end at the relevant point because there is a washer in here and we don't really want to lose it into the tank of water if we can avoid it. So thumb over the end. And you can see the washer there in red. Just check there's no washer on the other side. Now it's, I've got the one I want. So we can dismantle this now. We've got what we need. Okay, this is the uh, ball valve itself as it came out. Um, we're just going to want to remove the arm itself here, which is held in with a split pin. I'll try and make that visible. We've got a pin here and it's literally called a split pin because it's just bend at the end there. Let's just use some pliers to bend it back pretty straight. And that should pull straight through the original gap. There we go, straight out. As a result, that should just slide straight out. It's held together through those holes there. Get rid of that part, it's not so important now. I'll take the plastic funnel off just so I don't damage it at all here. Just unwind that. That's threaded in to the top there. Yours may be slightly different. This is likely to be the component that's identical. This is the part two device here. So indeed says. Cool. Now we've got the washer in here, which looks pretty knackered, to be fair. Uh, and it should have the nozzle behind it. Let's um, open this up. You might need again to get your spanner etc and use the metal here for leverage to undo this. I've undone this recently so I'm actually able to do this by hand. You're almost certainly going to need tools just to fight. As I say again use this as the leverage point to push against those to undo that ring there. That just comes off. Straightforward metal ring there. This can be a bit more difficult to get out of the middle here, but again has been out recently, so we'll come out without too much pain. 
So inside there is the diaphragm itself. And that definitely looks like it's had better days. So we're gonna to need to replace, this here is fairly straightforward. We've got the nozzle actually at the end there. So the water comes through and is stopped by the diaphragm, which is pressing up against it when, um, when obviously the ball is high, pushing that point inwards there. So I think the nozzle's absolutely fine. I'll just push it. Oh, it's quite solidly in. Work it loose. There we go. And I have to push it out back there with the washer. So that straightforward piece of metal there, which looks pretty fine. I might pop it in vinegar just to slightly tidy that up. Nozzle, bit of solid plastic, no real concerns there from my perspective. And this is the washer again, which as I say, just needs replacement. So the two components I'm gonna to look to replace is the diaphragm, which I'll try and extract off this piece of metal and this washer and then hopefully that will stop all the dripping. This is what I've bought to do the replacement with actually, is from Screwfix. They do just under three pound. It's actually a repair kit. So rather than having to buy the individual washers, which are like a, a couple of pound or something, I think, um, for packs of those, um, albeit you get multiple in a pack, if you're only gonna be doing one for a long while, this uh, pack's meant to suit, I think, part twos and part threes. So you've got the diaphragm I'm gonna need and the washer I'm gonna need. And then there are components here, which I've got a split pin as well, which would be useful, and the nozzle if we want it. Um, but then there's a washer um, and a part that would be needed for the part three instead. They work very differently. It just presses up against, the, um, against that tube basically instead. But yeah, so we'll lift those two bits out. I'm just going to try and extract this diaphragm off here now and uh, we can do the replacement. Right. There we go. Got my knife. The whole thing's kind of collapsing inwards on itself there, but as long as it will peel off, that's all we're actually after. There we go, you can just start to see the inside there. Put the knife aside. So the diaphragm's on there, just start to peel it back. It's nicely stuck in place. But that's again something that just needs replacement at this moment in time. And this looks pretty simple and solid. So I've just got here a jar with some malt vinegar in it. Um, don't need to worry about pure metal components, etc. We can just drop those in there and they'll uh, just help remove some of the lime scale that's causing challenges there. Um, this part, I don't know if I can actually just drop that bit out. I don't want any plastic or rubber really because that's more likely to uh, suffer as a result. I don't think that middle section is going to come out to be honest. I'm going to take a risk with it. Not quite what you should do, but um, I want this all nicely cleaned up so it's easy moving. Come back to that in a moment. Okay, the items have had a good thorough soaking in vinegar, so uh, it's ready to put it all back together again, so uh, we can do that now. So I'm going to start with the uh, main housing here. This is what we're gonna to need to put the diaphragm into. Um, actually, before we do that, let me just show you this part, the part in the front, which is gonna push into the diaphragm. So this button was really, really tough at the start to, uh, to do anything with. Now, having had a good soak in vinegar, it actually slides out, which is really important. But most importantly, it's just comfortable sliding backwards and forwards without any real effort at all there, um, which is really important so that it can turn on and off without getting stuck due to lime scale, etc. So really pleased with that, that's a nice job. Um, so as I say, back to the housing here, get the diaphragm. We need to just pop the diaphragm in. Now in order to know the way round for this, you can see there's a little ridge on this inside here. Hopefully you can just about see that. And this should be exactly the same on the diaphragm. So on one side here, it's completely smooth. On this side here, you can hopefully see there's a ridge as well 
So we're going to line those two up and they should beautifully marry up. So that fits really comfortably. If you turn it the wrong way up, it just doesn't feel comfortable in there. So that's how to know that's the right way up. We're going to need to then screw this one in place. This has got an alignment notch there. So just pull those two together. They're not going to marry up quite yet. Not until they're kind of forced in place. That's a nice seal by this ring here. Should be able to do that enough by hand to make sure that's really tough there. And that button now, plunger effectively, goes in and out nicely and moves the diaphragm as appropriate there, perfect. So that will marry up as it needs to with the nozzle. I'm gonna put the original one back in because there's really nothing wrong with that. But you can obviously replace that from the set if you need to. That's now all in place and diaphragm will meet it as it needs to to prevent water flow perfect so we'll pop this back on you might not need to in your tank but in my tank um, you can't actually twist this on and off when um hang on that's, that's going cross threaded um yeah you won't be able to actually do that while it's in the tank in my case just check in your case before you actually do it to make sure um, it's obviously easier to do at the end if it's possible to, to avoid any damage to it. But in my case, it simply won't twist in place due to the length of this piece here. So now we're pretty much ready to put it back in. Um, we're going to need to put the washer on the back before we actually uh, go ahead with that. That looks a little bit messy, actually. I need to make sure I've definitely got the new one. That is the newer one, to be fair. That's just because I've put it on and off a couple of times as part of testing this. So um, that is the new one. I'll push that in nice and tidily there so it hopefully can't fall out. But I'm still going to keep an eye carefully as I screw it back in. And we'll need to pop this all back together. So again, I've got the lines here. We're going to put this down through the middle ball itself and just line those holes all up nicely there. Let's make sure. get the pliers and just make sure it's properly straight. Otherwise it's not going to sail through easily. Get this lined up again. Oops. Slide it in and through. Perfect. That's then properly sliding in and through there. So all we need to do now is just split that pin to make sure it stays the way it should. There we go. It doesn't need to be done quite as heavily as I've done it there. But importantly, it is now a split pin holding that fully in place. So now as the ball comes up, plunger moves in and it pushes straight back out, forcing back against the ball, which is exactly what it should be doing. Perfect, we've got the washer in place. We are ready to reinstate that. So I'm gonna pop it back into the tank now, or into the cylinder. Okay, tools on standby. I've got my washer still in there. I'm just gonna put my finger over that as I lift it into the tank here. And then just do up by hand initially. deliberately put it a little bit sideways because I know I'm going to need to use the pliers as well as the spanner here to do up. Perfect, put that on there. Again, put this in place such that we're again not putting pressure on the plastic itself, we're putting pressure on the the metal and then we're just gonna tighten this up doesn't have to be massively tight the wash is going to do the work that's solid enough we'll just use the nut to move the whole thing around until that feels about right that all feels very solid 
and that seems to be working fine. So I can now turn the water on and hopefully this should flow and uh, stop as appropriate without dripping.